All right, welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Um, so this is one of our first individual program sessions within the RIT Saunders College of Business. Um, this is our MBA grad chat series. So we'll be having a variety of these throughout the semester and throughout the fall term. Um, the first of which is our Master of Science program in Hospitality and Business Management. Um, so each of these sessions will give you some details about the program. Um, you'll get a chance to meet the program director as well. Um, so Dr. Jerry Shea, who I'll turn it over to in a second, will um, provide some insights on the program. And then we'll have some time at the end for um, any questions and Q&A. Um, so we'll jump right in. Again, just a few logistical pieces. If you do have questions while Jerry is going through her presentation, feel free to put those in the chat. Um, we certainly welcome those and any questions that you have. And then if you do need closed captioning, feel free to use that at the bottom of the screen. There is a captioning feature that you can select and certainly utilize as well. Um, but welcome again. Thank you, folks. And I'll turn it over to Dr. Shea. All right. Thank you, Matt. Grab Good morning, everyone. Thank you for being with us here today. Okay, so I have actually prepared PowerPoint slides to introduce you know, our MS in hospitality business management. All right, so let's see what next. Oh. Okay, all right. So first of all, program highlights, highlights. Here are some of our program highlights. Okay, so uh, I would like to let you know that this program was designed with industry trends in mind. So the curriculum actually focused on technology, analytics, customer service, and then sustainability. So uh, our program also offered a very flexible, you know, learning options. So students can choose either to complete the degree uh, through the, you know, online or on campus courses. And then uh, in addition to the taking the six hospitality core courses, students can choose four elective courses from you know, other MS degree courses in our Saunders College of Business. And then so, which means that, you know, the secondary focus, you know, students are able to take courses from MBA program. Students are able to take courses from MS in finance, accounting, and then even the, you know, leadership programs. So this, the, the secondary uh, focus actually open doors, you know, to expensive career perspective, even beyond, you know, hospitality. And our has our MS in hospitality business management program is housed within a business school with AACSB uh, accreditation. So once you join our program, actually you are immediately connected with more than 25,000 business alumni from Sanders uh, Business of College. All right, so let's look at the ranking of the program. So our program was ranked number four in best masters in hospitality management in USA and number 19 globally uh, in 2022. So our also, it was ranked of number eight as the best hospitality management master's degree schools in Middle Atlantic region. It was also ranked the number 27, you know, as best hospitality and hotel manage management school in the world by CEO Ward Magazine's uh, 2023. All right. So in terms to the curriculum, let me show you this. Our curriculum includes six hospitality core courses. Okay, so the six core courses in include advanced lodging operation, advanced food and beverage business management, uh, customer experience and engagement, hospitality analytics, hotel real estate and investment and a capstone project. So these courses actually were designed to capture the industry trend. So it's all about technology. And then you got to learn things about, you know, how to analyze data. You're going to learn things about customer service. And then you're going to learn things about finance and all the skills or knowledge you are going to learn from this program, they are all transferable. 
All right. So in addition to the, you know, the six core courses, you know, students will take four elective courses. As I have mentioned that, you know, this four for uh, elective courses, you know, you can you can be chosen you can be chosen from you know any of our uh, master degrees, you know, in our Saunders College of Business. So you can have a secondary focus in management, marketing, accounting, finance, even data analytics, leadership, and innovation. So this slide actually shows that the example of the possible graduate courses you can take, you know, to develop your secondary focus. All right, our faculty, graduate faculty, all the courses were designed and taught by our graduate faculty with the PhD from well-renowned university and all of us, we all have extensive industry experience. So you can see that, you know, the short introduction of each of our graduate faculty. We got faculty, you know, with a PhD from Purdue University, Cornell University, and University of Central Florida, and Coventry University in UK. All right, student learning experiences. We are very dedicated to enhancing students' learning experience. So we often travel together with students to conferences and hotel and motel shows. So this kind of, you know, um, this kind of event actually provides students very variable learning experience and learning opportunities. Our student clubs often organize fundraising events to sharpen our students' event planning and management skills. So if you are interested in event planning management, this will be the right program for you to choose. So let's look at the picture. The picture uh, at the bottom on the left actually was taken during uh, our Valentine's Day dinner, you know, hosted by our students. And then the pictures on the right, you can see here actually future our student attending the high tech conference and then, you know, hotel show in New York City. All right. And then hotel internship, you know, although our uh, master program, we do not require students to do an internship. However, we strongly encourage our graduate students to gain industry experience. So usually we actually, we collaborate with our students, we work with our students and help our students, you know, identify hospitality companies that align with their career interests. So this slide actually shows the pictures of our students doing their internship with uh, Ila Disney, um, Caesar, Caesar Palace in Las Vegas and uh, a country club uh, here in Rochester. All right, career outlook. Our master degree will lead students to a variety of careers in technology, data analytics, finance, real estate, and hotel man management. So this slide shows the possible careers that students can pursue after our MS degree. So as you can see the examples here, you know, if you are passionate, if you're interested in, you know, hotel or restaurant operation, definitely our program will help you, you know, to find employment in this area. But other than that, you know, there are more opportunities, more kind of different kind of a variety of jobs that you can pursue with this degree. For example, you can consider to be become a customer experience director. All right, and then operation side, you can become a hotel restaurant general manager. If you are interested in event management and planning, you have a chance to become a you know event director. Also director of training and development, chief operating officer, director of finance, revenue manager, hospitality college lecturer. You can become an asset manager. You can do something related to real estate development, or you, know, you can become a consultant. You can be involved in hotel investment, chief development officer or brand manager. You can become a director of marketing analytics. And you, if you are interested in, in you know, um, new projects, you can become a project manager. And all the skills required by this so many different kind of jobs you know you can learn from the program all right so 
in terms of the application for admission. So currently we are accepting the, you know, spring 2023, you know, uh, application if you are interested in the online program or we are actually accepting the, you know, application either online or on campus, you know, for next year for 2024. So the application uh, pro procedure is simple. First thing you need to do is that you need to get online, go to, you know, rit.edu slash uh, apply to create your account. Once you create your account, you will follow the instructions to fill up information over there. And then that's the first thing you need to do. And the second thing you need to do is that you need to submit an official transcript, you know, um, you know, from your undergraduate degree. If you have done some graduate work already, it will be very helpful. You also submit a transcript, you know, um, related to your graduate work. If you are RIT alumni, it will be even easier you don't need to submit the official transcript. Eventually, our admission office will pull up, you know, all your transcript with RIT. So you can skip this one if you are RIT, uh, um, you know, alumni. And then the third thing you need to do is that you need to submit a personal statement. So basically for the personal statement, we want to know that why are you interested in this program? And, you know, what do you want to, you know, what you want to do? You know, what will be your career uh, career goals? And so this is mo mostly about, and then what, what are your strengths? Okay, so this is the, about the personal statement. And we also would like you to submit a current resume so we know that we, we can learn more about you and know your work experience. All right, so if you need more information, you know, here are the two uh, contact people. You know, you can either contact Matt, okay? And I have Matt's, um, you know, email address here. And then you can also contact me, you know, so um, you can see my email address here. All right, so that would be all for my uh, presentation today. Um, now I'm going to open up to everybody. Do you have any questions for me about the program or anything about the application? I'm going to stop. All right, Matt, I'm going to turn it over to you. <laughs> yes, no, thank you, Jerry. Um, appreciate it. Um, so, folks, as we kind of move forward here, um, certainly welcome any questions you have um, regarding the programs, the application process, um, or anything along those lines. Um, Gary, I know you mentioned the program um, will be offered online or in person. Um, actually, we do have a question here. Um, so I'm an RIT alumni, can I do the online MS? Absolutely, yeah, there, there's no restrictions as an yeah. alum um, with respect to program modality. I will say that, um, I know Jerry mentioned spring potentially for online, but that is heavily contingent on if we have enough students to um, begin the program. So just be mindful of that because generally speaking, spring can be difficult um, to get um, up and running just given course sequencing and just naturally fall being the time that students look to start. Um, but you can certainly apply for spring um, and we would certainly, you know, explore that um, and, and take it from there. Um, I, In terms of minimum number of students, I, I don't want to necessarily get into that just because it, it can vary. Um, you know, this program, just given the different modalities that it's taught in, um, just we just need a certain number of students for the program to, to run um, realistically, um, especially in the spring term. Um, so the online, it, there shouldn't be any restrictions with respect to elective options, especially because the electives span every one of our programs. So as Jerry alluded to, um, because you take courses and electives from the MBA and from other programs, it's not restrictive in, in any way, shape or form. 
Um, and we generally have a good uh, amount of online offerings, um, you know, that are available. So, um, you know, it's, um, you know, it's open game from that sense in terms of what's available. Um, and obviously, you know, with us running the program online, those core courses are going to be available as well. So. Uh, I would like to add something about the, you know, online courses and uh, on, uh, elective options. Um, you know, for for as I mentioned, that students are required to complete six, uh, you know, H hospitality core courses and four elective courses, and then the six hospitality courses will be offered as asynchronous online courses. So students are not required to, you know, get online on certain time to do the to attend the class. So all our hospitality, the six hospitality courses, you know, are asynchronous online courses. But for the, you know, elective courses, because you are going to choose the elective courses, you know, from, you know, uh, other MS degree courses. So you probably will not expect all their courses will be asynchronous online. Some of them may be, you know, online, but they may not be asynchronous. You probably will need to, you know, uh, follow the class schedule, get online, you know, to do the, to attend the, you know, the, uh, the class sessions. But, you know, um, but we, we, I will help you or our academic advisor, we will help you to select the right elective courses. I know some of the students, they may have a full-time job, you know, may, they may not be able to, you know, attend, you know, synchronous online courses, but we will work with you together and help you to identify the courses that will fit your schedule and then that courses that will fit your, you know, career, um, career choice. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and again, I, when you register for the classes, you'll be you'll know whether the course is asynchronous versus synchronous. Um, so that would be clearly defined. Um, I can see here is one more question. What about master thesis? Do I have to be in campus for the defense? Um, okay, to complete our degree, uh, we are you are not required to do a thesis. There is no master thesis, but you need to complete the capstone project. So for us, is that the capstone project is considered as the you know alternative of the master thesis. So if you if you choose the online program, the capstone project will also be conducted online. So you don't need to come, come to campus to do the you know, capstone project. And then there is no defense because there is no um, you know, thesis, you know, okay. Yeah, so again, with the program being fully online, it is fully online. So there's no on-campus commitment um, that you have to have to worry about. So um, now certainly, you know, if you did, you know, if you are local and you did want to take a certain class in person, you could. You can't go above two classes as an online student, but there is the option to potentially take up to two classes in person if you choose to. And the big reason there, and one of the things that we didn't discuss too much in the presentation is scholarships. So for the online program, and this may change, but currently there's a discount for online tuition of 43%. So um, there's no additional scholarships, but compared to the on-campus tuition, it's a 43% discount. Whereas if you do the on-campus um, program, you are just awarded a merit scholarship. And those range anywhere from 20 to 50% of tuition, um, just based on your merits as an applicant. Um, so just be mindful of that as well as you're, you know, considering options um, um, and, you know, looking at, you know, pathways to, to complete it and also scholarship, you know, opportunities as well. Yeah, so this is a good question, Jerry. What is the timeline for the MS program in hospitality? Is it 18 months or can it be completed in less than that? Okay, uh, I uh, I want to tell you, uh, I don't know if you are talking about online or on, you know, in, in, right. uh, on campus program, but either way, I think that if you, if you choose the online program, okay, online program, okay, you can choose to do it as a part-time or a full-time. 
Okay, and then so the uh, so it really depends on how many courses you take per semester. Okay, so as I mentioned that you need to finish 10 courses in order to, you know, to receive the degree. So if you imagine that you only take, uh, you know, two courses per semester, so that will take you five semesters to finish the degree. But if you choose to do, you know, three, three uh, courses per, per semester, you can finish in three semester or, you know, four semester. So it really depends. So if you are, I think that, if you are thinking of, I want to finish, yeah, you are full-time employee, yeah, probably the majority of my online students that they are taking just one course per semester or two courses per semester. So it probably will take you about two and a half years, you know, to finish the, to finish the degree. And during summertime, Yes, I'm going to mention that, Rebecca. Thank you. Are summer courses available? Yes, you know, um, summer during summertime, you also have the opportunity to choose, you know, graduateable course. But I will say that your best chance probably is to take your elective courses from, you know, other centers, college or business, and they, they offer, you know, online courses during summertime. And you can also take courses during summertime and then to kind of shorten the length of your study. And yeah, then I absolutely. also want, I also want to let you know that even though we, we say this is an online program, we actually follow the semester schedule. It's just the difference between the online program and the on-campus program. The, the main difference is that uh, on-campus program students will come to the classroom, you know, to 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 take courses. But uh, online is that you know it's it's truly online. You you don't physically you don't come to campus to do the course. But we are still following the you know the uh, school uh, academic uh, semester. Yeah. It, so. Most of our part-time students, if you want to get the program done in that two-year or less window, take two classes per term. So again, if you do that across five semesters, including summer classes, you can actually get the program done in a little less than two years. Um, yeah. It's just given um, the, that summer class piece, um, you know, being of importance. If you don't, then it would be more in that two and a half year window of time. And then I also want to let you know that um, this uh, MS in hospitality business management program is a very new program. We actually just, we actually revamped, you know, our old program and we created, uh, you know, a new, a new, new program. So we actually just, just launched this program this fall. So as I mentioned that, you know, everything is, you know, everything we are teaching to our students, everything is the new trend in the industry. So this is a very upfront, you know, um, you know, hospitality and tourism program. This is something very, very different from other hospitality and tourism programs. All right. Um, any other questions that that folks have? Yeah. So, what is the next step? Um, where to enroll? Um, yeah. So, Jerry spoke to the application process, so you can complete that right online. Um, RIT.edu/apply, and you just select um, graduate. Um, programs and then you can create your account and go through the application process um, in that uh, fashion. Um, so again, if you are looking at a potential spring start, um, certainly feel free to apply for that. Just be mindful of, you know, the fact that, um, you know, we may have to look at fall ultimately, just depending on, um, you know, how things shake out for spring. Um, but yeah, so you can go right there and again, personal statement, resume, transcripts, um, we do typically, and Jerry, I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong on this, but we do typically require the GMAT and GRE and the TOEFL and IELTS for international students as well. So that is something right. to be mindful of. However, if you are an international student, but you have a degree from the U.S. already, then that stuff's all waived, um, you know, given that degree. So just be mindful of that as well. But I assume if you're looking online that you're probably not international, maybe. I mean, I shouldn't assume, but um, 
Yeah, but again, if you are on campus, if you are viewing this, and if you're in Croatia, am I right to assume that you're an RIT graduate? I think I might have seen that in the registration. Right. You graduated right. from RIT. Right. So, uh, Kritisha, you should be fine because you have a yeah. degree from RIT yeah. already. So you, you are fine. Right. You don't. So you won't. You don't have to worry about, um, you know that that element right. of of the process. So it's really just resume, transcripts, personal statements, um, and the online application form. Um, we don't require letters of recommendation. Um, so that um, is something, I think it may be built into the application, but it, you can just skip that section um, and uh, just complete the application in that fashion. And then from there, uh, Jerry works with Peggy Terrell, Terrell, who oversees our admissions process. They review the application, and then you hear back usually two to three weeks at most, um, a lot of times even quicker, um, in terms of your decision. And then, again, with respect to the online program, you'd be getting that tuition discount, um, at least as things currently stand. Right, and I just uh I just typed the uh, you know the application uh you know um uh, the link to the uh the chat room so if you can kind of check the chat room rit.edu/slash apply if you go to that URL then create the account that's how you are going to enroll so this is the application uh process and then so through that platform your account you know you will be asked to fill in some information about you know your bachelor degree and you know uh, uh gender or whatever those kind of very basic information and then the system will ask you to submit uh, you know personal statement will ask you to submit uh, you know your transcript but if you are RIT alumni, you don't worry about your transcript. We will do that for you. And you also need to prepare a, a resume. Okay, I think that, and then the uh, recommendation later, as uh, Matt just mentioned, recommendation letters are not required. They are, option, uh, are optional. So you don't need to worry about the, you know, actually don't, worry, don't need to worry about the recommendation later. So once you submit all the required documents, you know, um, your, your package will be transferred to the, you know, admission committee. We have a committee, we will review, you know, the, the documents you submit. We will review your personal statement and we will look at our program goal. We will see that, what do you want to achieve for your career? We will see if this is a good match, you know, and then we will make the, you know, the final decision and we will notify you, you know, uh, have you been admitted? Um, to the program or not. So basically, this is the procedure, you know, um, of the application and how we make the decision for your application. All right. Any, any other questions? And I'm uh, going to type. Sorry, Matt. Go ahead, Matt. So Olabisi, I see that you just joined. Um, we're kind of towards the end here. Um, we started at 9 a.m. Eastern, um, but the session is recorded. Um, so I'll, I can send um, send you a copy of it. Um, but we certainly, we do have time if there are other questions. So if there are more questions, we can certainly feel those. Um, but yeah, thank you all again for, for joining us. Um, Jerry, I guess the last thing I would ask, um, what, from, from your lens, because um, I know you've worked with the program, hospitality students and whatnot for quite, quite a while, um, what would you say is one of the key differentiators of, of our hospitality programs and RIT on the whole um, with respect to this program? Well, I, th I think something that very unique about this program is that, you know, everything is related to technology. We incorporate technology, all the concept about technology, you know, uh, analytics, everything is about, you know, data analysis and, and sustainability. The, co the, 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 the concept actually are fully incorporated in, into, you know, all of our courses. So it doesn't matter, you are taking a larger management class, you are taking a course related to, you know, 
restaurant, you know, um, management, you will learn everything about all aspect of applying data analysis into your hotel management, into the, you know, restaurant management. And the other thing, something that's very special is that we have great faculty members, you know, we really care about our students. We will set our online students, you know, to set our appointment at 9, 9 p.m. in the evening just to go over the, you know, the questions that they have, you know. So we really care about our students and we are always here. And the other thing, something special about our program is that our hospitality and tourism program has been around for more than 120 years. So we have a lot of, a lot of great outstanding alumni. They are now all the leaders in the industry. So, you know, and they, they are very supportive of our program. They frequently come back and meet with students and they also offer a lot of job opportunities for our students. So I can tell you, this is a great program to join. And I look forward, you know, to having you in my class soon. Yeah, thank you, Jerry. No, I appreciate that. Um, and I can certainly um, speak to the engagement of the faculty and alumni as well. Um, given just the roots of the program, there's a lot of alumni out there doing a lot of great stuff. And you can certainly have that opportunity to connect with those folks um, and really continue to build your network as well, um, which is very valuable to have. All right, so I don't see any more questions question. So I think we can wrap up here. Um, again, the, the session is recorded. So for those folks, if anybody jumped in late or came in and had to go out or whatever, um, we'll certainly send this along to folks that registered um, and we'll get it on our website as well. Um, but Jerry, any closing thoughts here or anything that you just want to end on? Yeah, I have I actually have left my uh, email address again in the chatting room. So, you know, you are very welcome, you know, to contact me if you have any other questions, please feel free to contact me. So if you are not assured that, you know, the hospitality career, something like that, you know, you you are more than welcome, you know, to speak with me. You know, we can we can talk about maybe I can help you to figure out what's the right program for you to choose. But you but you know, so feel free to contact me. And thank you very much for being here with us today. Thank you. Yes, thank you, everyone. Um, I just threw my um email in the chat as well. Um, so I work with all of our graduate under or graduate prospective students. So any questions you have certainly feel free to reach out um, and we're certainly happy to connect you with faculty, current students, even alumni as well. Um, we certainly welcome all that. So um, thank you again, everyone, and have a good day. Thanks. Thank you.